we are sort of still in this world of, of probability. You know we were doing conditional probability yesterday, right? So we're kind of still in that same sphere. But we're going to go in a slightly different direction. And it's going to seem pretty basic to begin with. But then again, so did independent events. And you're like, oh, those were hard. Okay, so just be patient with it. Let's have a look at this question and use this as our lens, our scenario, to understand some new concepts. Amy scoops up coins at random from a, a pile containing one 10 cent coin and two 5 cent coins. Part A, there's a part B, but it's got spoilers in it. Part A says, name the 10 cent coin T for 10. I'm going to put it here. And the two 5 cent coins, F1 and F2. F1 equals 5 cents. F2 equals 5 cents. I've named them. Write down as sets the seven possible non-empty scoops. So let's just get the idea in, in mind, right? The coins are in the bag. Amy reaches in, gets some number of coins. Now, see how it says she scoops up coins at random, and then it says this phrase, non-empty scoops. So she always grabs some coins. But the whole point is that um, there are different possibilities. She doesn't always grab all of the coins. She'll grab some number of them, and there's different possibilities, yeah? So let's just do this together. We can kind of call this out, right? What are the first three possibilities for a coin she might grab? I'll give you a clue. They're already on the board. <laughs> okay, good. So each of these is a possibility, right? Let's jot those down. One, two, three. The question, very generously, has told us there are seven possible combinations. So this was grabbing them one at a time. Let's try and do this systematically so I don't miss any. What might be our next step? Two at a time. Okay. So if I just jot down one at a time, and now I'll do two at a time. All right, let's write down some of these combinations, right? So what might be one of them? Just give me one. T and F1. Great. So T and F1. You can see, by the way, I'm adding because later on it's going to ask us, uh, like, what's the total that she's gotten, okay? So T and F1, that's going to be a total of 15 cents. What's another combo? T and F2. That is also 15 cents. And then there's one final way to do two. F1 and F2. And that's going to give us a total of 10 cents because they're five at a time. Okay, so here are options. We had one, two, and three. Here are options four, five, and six. There's only one left. And what is that? All three at them. So I'll go three at a time. And then we can say, all right, uh, what have I got here? T plus F1 plus F2. And that's obviously 20 cents in total. Fantastic, there's option seven. Okay, now do you remember yesterday we were having a look at all of these different probability situations and one of the things we noticed was, depending on the question, sometimes a tree diagram would help or sometimes a Venn diagram would help, right? The way that you represent the information in a question often helps you to solve the question. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna create a table. So draw up for me, it's just gonna have two rows like so. And what I'd like to put uh, in our different rows are, on the top row, it's what's the actual total amount, right? So maybe I'll just call it that, total amount. Down here. And then what I want to write down in the bottom is what's the probability of getting that particular total amount? Amount. So have a look at our seven different options. What's the smallest possibility? Five cents. Right here, five cents. Next, next biggest. After five cents, we could get the next biggest up is 10. What about after that? 15. And then 20. Great. Now, because there are seven possibilities, and seven's a prime number, the probability for each of these is actually quite easy to determine. We don't even need to simplify any fractions, right? How many ways is it possible to get five cents for Amy out of the bag? Two ways. 
two ways possible. There's the favorable outcomes, but of course for a probability we need to... For a probability, we need to divide. Divide by what? Sample space, which in this case is... Seven. Good. And we're going to divide by seven every single time. In fact, because we're doing that, I'm going to be lazy and just write it every single time. And then you can go ahead and fill out the rest of the things. This is a theoretical probability that we're working out, because obviously we actually haven't done this experiment. So how many ways to get 10 cents? Two. How many ways to get 15? Also two. And that leaves one. Fantastic. All right. So what have we just had a look at here? Here comes our heading. <laughs> what we've had a look at here is a situation where we're trying to understand, well, it's, it's unpredictable. Every time Amy scoops in, it's like, well, one of these things is going to happen. We'd never know what the chance is exactly, right? And importantly, even though these are all numbers, right, it's not just any number. You can't have like 5.1 cents or the square root of three cents, right? It's like these are the only options that you've got. Now this particular kind of situation, we give a super fancy name. Get ready, here it comes. We call this a discrete random variable. Man, that's a mouthful, isn't it? I told you, I warned you, this is why I didn't tell you uh, right from the start, this was the heading, okay? I'm convinced that 50% of why mathematicians give such fancy names to things is because um, they have like all of these words, which I'm going to unpack, they have technical meanings that are very specific. The other 50% is we kind of just want to sound smart. It's like, I'm, I'm doing discrete random variables today, and people are like, ooh, intimidating, okay? To understand what this means, I think it's actually easiest to start from the end and then go back to the start. So let's begin with this word. You know what this means. Variable? <laughs> What's the opposite of variable? If a thing cannot vary, it's... It's constant, right? Now, as you might imagine, in a situation where we're trying to think about probabilities, if things are constant, not very interesting, right? We don't need to, there's no problem to solve because you know exactly what's going to happen. But variable means there's a specific value that can change. And that's the thing that we're focusing on, okay? In this case, what was the specific value that we were looking at? It was the, the, the total amount. That, didn't have to be the thing that I was looking at. What might be another variable in this situation that I could have like inspected rather than the total amount? What else could I have looked at? Have a look at what's in red. What have I got there? That's, that's how many coins got pulled out each time, right? That's still a variable. It's a specific value that can change. Sometimes she gets one coin, sometimes she gets two, sometimes she gets all three. Right? And I'd have a whole different table for that, different probabilities and so on. Right? Um, I could have said, how about uh, how much is left inside the bag? Right? That's another variable. Uh, it's just not the one that I was interested in. Okay? Does this make sense? There's some specific value that can change. That's what we're focused on. Okay. This next word, random. <laughs> when we say, like, whoa, that was random, what does that mean? Unpredictable, right? You can't know ahead of time what's going to happen. You, any of these are possible, right? Now, the opposite of random in maths, it's a word that we, it's a bigger, fancier word, but it's, it's important for you to know it so you know it's the opposite. It's what we call deterministic. It's a long word. Let's write that down. Deterministic. A deterministic variable might be something like this. You don't have to write this down, but here you go. You've seen variables like this before. You know exactly what x has to be. There's not different things. It's like when I roll the dice, sometimes x is this, and other days x is that. It's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not random. That's determined, right? So when we say random, we mean it's not deterministic. It can take on different values and take on different values unpredictably. So this usually happens when there is some kind of, there should be a Y there, sorry. When there's some kind of set of factors that influence the situation and you can't know what they are. Like maybe she just grabs at the top of the bag or maybe she reaches right from the bottom. Like well, you never know which one she does, so you can't know which of these things is going to take place. So that's the randomness part, okay? Now, this next word, discrete, 
is not to be confused with, thank you English, discreet with two E's. When you see the word discreet with two E's, that means do it really subtly. Don't tell lots of people, right? That's do it discreetly, okay? When we say discreet with one E and then another one on the end, do you remember I told you here it could be five or 10 or 15 or 20? And that's it. That's all the options. There are no in-betweens. There's no like, oh, it might be this or it might be that. This is, this is the complete set of options, right? So this word, discrete, the opposite of it, like this has an opposite, right? The opposite of discrete is continuous. <coughs> continuous? Have a think about this, right? If I could say you could get any number between, say, 5 and 20, right? Then it's like there's a continuous sort of spectrum of different values that Amy can pull out, okay? Now, at least at the moment, our currency system does not work like that, right? So there are discrete values that can be chosen, right? So it's not continuous. There are particular known values are possible. Not just anything. <laughs> Right? Now, it is worth pointing out that, well actually I might, I might put to all of you, right? I said our currency system doesn't work that Amy could just like grab and get any random amount of money, right? But can you maybe think of a situation where Amy was reaching and grabbing for something and actually she could get random different amounts in between? What if she weren't grabbing for money? What could be something that was stored in here where it wouldn't just be, oh it's this, this or this, it could be anything. What else could she have in the bag? Yeah? Numbers. numbers. Okay, so it was like an infinite bag of like, I don't know how I would pick up a number, but sure, that would work because numbers, numbers themselves have no limitations on them, right? I, we just had some examples before. Root 3, 5 on 2, that can be anything, right? Thinking a bit more in concrete terms though, right? Let's suppose she had, instead of a bag, let's suppose she had like a bucket and it had water in it, right? Now, if I said to you, how much water does Amy get out of there? I guess we could say, oh, she takes one mil or two mils or three mils. But guess what? She could take any amount of water from there, yeah? So that would be a continuous variable, not a discrete variable. We're not, not going to look at continuous random variables for quite some time because the maths required to understand them, it's going to take you literally 12 months to develop all of that stuff. So if you're like, oh, we're doing this one and we're going to do the next one, just wait till year 12, you'll get there, okay? Um, but you have to learn some calculus actually before you can handle that. So we'll put that to one side.